Hi, my name is Kathy Dodson, and I am part of the summer staff here in Montreat at the Sally Jones Pottery Studio. I would much rather be together with you in the studio in person, but because that isn't possible this summer with um, a pandemic, we decided to produce some of these YouTube videos to take you through the steps of some of the projects that we might make if we were together in the studio. My suggestion is that you take a few minutes and look through the video from start to finish, assemble your materials, and then come back and you can stop it as you get through the different steps in the process. And then on Tuesday afternoons, we will be having a YouTube video so that you can um, join me at two o'clock on Tuesday afternoons and we can talk about the projects and see if there are any questions you have or any uh, problems you encounter. So let's get started and I'll assume that you have gotten some uh, slabs of clay. With a three pound slab, you could probably make three or four of these angels. You'll need um, a six or eight inch uh, plate. These are, uh, this is a plastic plate. You could use a, a china plate or a paper plate, whatever you have handy, but you don't want it to be too much bigger than this. Uh, you need a pencil. Uh, a chopstick is a handy tool, as are these uh, bamboo skewers. They have a sharp pointed end on one end and a flat end on the, on the other. Plastic forks, knives, and spoons are handy tools to have. Um, a credit card makes a nice smoothing tool. And just look around your house to see different things you might use as tools. Um, we're going to start out drawing a circle, cutting a circle with our plate. So place your plate down on your clay. And I'm going to tell you like uh, elementary school art teachers tell you uh, when you start with a piece of construction paper. Don't cut it out of the middle. Start on the edge so that you will have enough uh, slab left if, in case you decide you wanna make more angels or another project. So we're gonna take our sharp end of our skewer and just trace around your plate. And then you'll peel away the scraps and the clay that you'll receive uh, that you picked up with your kit from um, the pottery studio is a great uh, moist soft consistency it doesn't need any added water um, if you will keep it covered up with plastic when you're not uh, working with it particularly even the scraps if you'll press them together and put them under the cover of plastic they will stay pliable so that you can um, we'll need some of that uh, as we get our project going um, I keep a, a little bowl of water and a, a rag so I can wipe my hands off as I'm working. A towel is handy to have in your lap because clay is kind of a messy project. And should you need to answer your phone or take a break, um, you can rinse your hands off real quickly and um, dry them off without getting clay all over everything. So we've got our disc cut out, our circle, and um, this plate has got a nice little texture pattern on the edges and so uh, I may I'm going to use that to make some, some texture on my disc and so I'm just going to press it into the edge of my disc and texture on uh, clay makes a nice place for the glaze or the iron oxide um, to pool and it, it just creates a lot of interest in your finished piece and there are a lot of things you can use to make uh, texture uh, on your clay and be on the lookout for things around your house. Sometimes the tops of hair care products have interesting designs. Um, you can use uh, your skewers or your uh, plastic ware. Um, there are a lot of things you can use. Lace makes a nice imprint. So I've got my, my disc and I'm going to cut it in half. Just take my pointed skewer and cut it down the middle. And I'm going to set the other half aside because we're going to need that in just a minute. And um, if I take my skewer, I can use get the excess clay off of it. 
I can take the pointed edge and do a little bit of scoring along that edge. Just make some little cross hatches. They don't have to be neat. That's where our clay is gonna, when you join two pieces of clay together, you wanna give um, something to grab, for it to grab onto. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the slip, this uh, that we call, uh, it's the mud that's made with water and clay that is used as kind of a glue in pottery. You don't wanna put a whole lot, and if you have a paintbrush, uh, that's handy to apply, but um, you can also just use, I'm using a chopstick here, just a tiny little bit along, along the edge. Like glue, you don't wanna use so much that it oozes out all over the place. And I'm just gonna press my two edges together and smooth them down. And if I press with a finger on the inside and on the outside, I can make my seam disappear. Your finger is, is one of the best smoothing tools that you have. So smooth it down so that it's nearly invisible you don't want to make a, a thin spot in your clay, but this clay is a pretty good thickness to give you a little bit of leeway should you want to put some texture on there. So there's my seam, and it's still split just a little bit at the bottom, so I'm going to press overlap that a little bit and press it down. So there's my my cone it makes uh, to make the base of my ain't <clears throat> excuse me angel. So sit it down on your work surface. I've covered my table with an old shower curtain. Um, clay is kind of a messy process. You can use wax paper or um, parchment, bacon parchment, or an old plastic tablecloth. Anything that you've got, a tray works fine. So sit it down so it'll have sort of a flat bottom. And anytime you've got a, a cut edge in your clay, you want to smooth it with your finger so that it's not sharp. Once it's fired, it becomes uh, almost like a knife edge. So you want to smooth that out so you don't have any rough or sharp edges to your clay. So the next thing we need to do is give our angel a head. And so take a little scrap of clay about the size of a marble and you can roll it and make a ball. You can roll it on the table and just to flatten the top of your cone just a tiny little bit and give it just a little bit of scratches. Scratch the bottom of your ball a little bit. And I'm gonna take just the tiniest little dot of slip and put it on the bottom of uh, the head and just press it down lightly onto the cone. Now, if I take something to smooth it with. I'm, I'm using a, a credit card, they're handy. And if you look at my sample here, her head is kind of flattened in the back where it's been attached so that it'll be sure and not fall off because there is almost nothing worse than a headless angel. So I'm gonna take one side to be the back. Let's see if I could find where my seam was, that might be a good place. So I'm just gonna take some of the, push some of the clay from the ball down to join it to the cone, the body, and it'll make her look like she's got a terrifically flat head, but that's gonna be covered up with um, wings and halo and maybe some hair, so it really won't matter. The main thing you wanna do is smooth it so that you don't have rough edges or crumbs. So spend a few minutes smoothing out your join so that her head is well attached to the body. The next thing we want to do is give her some sleeves. And you can see her sleeves have a nice imprint of lace, which gives your clay some really great texture. Um, if you have an old piece of lace or um, even a, a bag that produce comes in, uh, play around with that and see if you can get some nice texture. And I'm going to take the the other half of my disc that I set aside a minute ago, and I'm just going to cut some small pie shapes 
to use for her sleeves. And I'll try to make them the same size. I'm gonna use one from either end of my, so they're roughly the same size. So I've got two triangles and I'll see where they're gonna fit. You want kind of the pointed part to be toward the front. Sometimes you have to play around to see where that is. There. So what I wanna do, because I'm joining two pieces of clay, I'm gonna mark just lightly on my cone where the wings, where her arms will go so that I can give it a little bit of scoring to give the pieces of clay something to grab onto. And I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of slip and daub it on there. And then I can take my one sleeve and another sleeve and press them in place. And you don't want them to be completely blended into the, the dress, but you do want to smooth out any rough edges that you've got. And you can take a thumb on the inside and press to make sure they stay in place, that there are her arms. Now, um, this angel looks like she's got hands that are raised in prayer. If you want to do little slivers for hands, you can certainly do that. I think I'm going to make just two little balls for her hands. So they're, they're going to be down here at the bottom. I'm going to score just a tiny little bit and put this, the smallest amount of slip. And then the back of my ball is, is still a little rough. And so I'm just going to press it on. Try to make her hands roughly the same size. That's embarrassing to have hands two different sizes. And I'm going to hold my thumb and finger on the inside so I can press the hands down a little bit. And if you wanted her to hold a candle, you could put a little, a little snake there coming up from her hands. Um, so there, there is our angel with sleeves and hands. And let's give her, out of the rest of the, the um, disc that we cut, let's make her some wings. Now this, this sweet angel has got lovely wings that look a little bit like a butterfly. And if you would like to give them some texture with lace or whatever you've got, you can certainly do that. Um, I'm going to cut, trace the shape of a butterfly. And they're sort of bigger at the top than they are at the bottom. But it gives a nice anchor for the wings because they're gonna stick out, as you can see, they're gonna stick out a little bit from the base of the angel. So I've got those cut out and they're pretty, they're pretty rough. So I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna smooth them with my finger so that there are, there are no hard cut edges on the wings and it may it may make them a little bit thinner which is okay you don't want a angel an angel that weighs 14 pounds well you might but there are her wings with fairly smooth edges you can always come back when you're finished assembling her and and smooth out any imperfections or rough spots so the, the wings are going to stick up pretty close to where her head joins. So I want to just take a little bit right in the middle and score it and put a tiny little bit of slip on there. And then I'll do the same thing with the back of the wings 
and give them a little bit of scoring. And I'll take, put them in place, put my thumb on the inside and press where the butterfly's body would be. And there they are. And you can shape them if you want them to curve a little bit. You can do that. Mine are a little bit pointed. These are a little more rounded. That's a, whatever you choose, whatever um, shape you decide, decide on, just make sure that there aren't any rough, sharp, cut looking edges. So there's our angel with sleeves, hands, and wings. Now, she definitely needs some hair. And if you have a garlic press where you are, gar uh, clay press through a garlic press makes delightful hair. But I'm not gonna lie, cleaning clay out of a garlic press is uh, not on my list of favorite things to do. And so I'm gonna use just a little piece of clay that I'm gonna shape into a little snake. And you just roll it on the table with one or two hands and make sure you've got a pretty uniform thickness of snake. And he's not gonna be a whole lot thicker than my skewer. So let's take our, our skewer and just a little tiny bit of scoring and the teeniest little drop of slip and I'm gonna lay her hair on top of her head and, and just give it a little light, light press. Now, she's got these, these magnificent braids. Um, and let's see, you could have them hang down in the front if you wanted her to be an angel with braids. I think I'm gonna loop mine up and let her have those kind of braids like that the mean blonde girl in Little House on the Prairie used to have. I always thought those were wonderful. And I'm just gonna attach it at the top of her head and then the loops will sort of hang down. And you get the idea of hair. Now she definitely needs a halo. Oh, what's an angel without a halo? And so I'm gonna make another tiny little snake shape. It doesn't need to be very long. And I think if I make a little bit of a score at the back of her head where the, the halo is going to attach, I think that'll be sufficient. So I'm going to put one end of the halo at the back of her head and wrap it around and then pinch off the other end. And there is her halo. It just sort of sits on her head. And I think it's well enough attached if I press it at the back a little bit. There she is. Now, this angel has got a most expressive face. She looks like she's got closed eyes and a singing mouth. You can choose whether you want to give your angel uh, a face, how much detail you want to make. I think my angel is just going to have a mouth, so I'm just going to give her sort of a little... A little imp just the suggestion of a mouth and um, I think it would be a good thing to spend a little bit of time smoothing the edges and making sure your hair and halo are exactly like you want them and um, as you notice the bottom of of her skirt is crimped up a little bit like a pie crust and you can certainly do that if you want uh, to make your angel a little fancy it gives her a nice uh, stable base when she sits on a table. Um, but before you finish, you want to make sure that you turn your angel over and using the pencil, not the skewer, but just a, a dull pencil because um, then it, that will be a thick enough line that it, when the clay is fired and shrinks, because it shrinks a good bit in the kiln, um, that your, your name will still be visible. And it's a good idea to put your whole name, or at least part of your whole name, um, because there are a lot of people that share the same first and last initials. I like to put uh, the date, and um, if you're just in Montreat for a little while, you might want to put Montreat in there. Um, 
whatever you think will um, help you identify it and help us identify it when it comes out of the kiln. Um, everybody thinks their piece is completely unique and often we'll find when they come out of the kiln, there are a lot of them that end up looking very, very similar. So having your name on the inside is really important. So there's your little angel. She would look nice, I think, um, dipped in iron oxide. If you, uh, that's a matte uh, finish. If you would like her to have a little shine, you could then also um, dip it in, dip her in uh, a clear glaze and that would make her shiny. And who does not love a shiny angel? Um, there are some beautiful um, glaze colors. If you choose, you want to, to, to glaze her. Um, when we talk on Tuesday at our Zoom gathering, I'll show you the glaze options and you can um, decide how you would like her to be glazed. Um, before you uh, glaze, you always have to dip the, the base in wax so that she won't stick to uh, the kiln shelf. Um, and then you can just dip her upside down real quickly and um, glaze her a color if you decide to do that. So good luck with your angel and I will um, look for you again. Good luck.